um, on the on the wheat crop we we no, especially on these nitrogen treatment plots so do you mean ndvi not ndvi if you if you are taking any asd spectral radiometer hyperspectral measurements anything uh, on the wheat crop we are not yeah on the wheat yeah no on the wheat we we, we are not and on the summer crops we are not either so the measurements that we're taking <coughs> I know that overlaps for yes. for all crops. It's um, biomass, then, then the percent of nitrogen in that biomass as well, uh, percent canopy cover, and then I th all the yield and yield components. Uh, and I think that Ignacio is also taking the fair index, which we are not in, in the wheat phase. Yeah, I mean, everybody is using NDVI, but uh, uh, recently some studies showing that uh, the spectral uh, uh, spectral signatures uh, around uh, uh, the shortwave radiation, uh, uh, you know, capture the difference in nitrogen treatments. So, just curious if you are, if you guys are taking any hyperspectral measurements, so that we can we can try to see if there would be any relationship between the difference in nitrogen treatments and the spectral measurements, <clears throat> spectral indices are. Are you are you talking like stat or? Um... Somehow we couldn't hear the voice from the people uh, who, who uh, just, uh, yeah. So are you talking about SPAD or uh, the Green Seeker type measurements? I'm not sure which. Uh, yes, the spectral radiometer. I don't know. Probably you guys may not have it. Uh, I can communicate with uh, um, like maybe uh, Ignacio or somebody. Uh, to see. Yeah, so I guess the uh, short answer is no. <laughs> We're not doing So, Prasad, we're not doing that uh, at the moment. We're kind of discussing uh, okay. other other measurements there, but not this one. So, uh, what, I'll refer to this one as, as nitrate here, just to separate from the soil quality one that Chuck's doing. And I'll just put it every year. This would be at at planting with with the different crops, and then the students can coordinate. So, for example. Luana and I were going to plant three different planting days from coordinate with Paula. So she's sampling on the same day that we we're planting. Yeah, I'm, I'm one of my students, and Paula can help sample for the nitrate. That's all I. Excellent. Yeah. Because if we do that, then I think it's well aligned with the crop calendar. We have exactly from planting yeah, until, yeah, yeah. until harvest there. And that harvest one can be used for the planting of the next crop because it's within a few days anyways. Um, very good. So I guess that's that's good Good to, to, to line so, that one up. Well, Justin's coming. He said he'd be here at 8.30. Um, I guess after he talked and hearing the raking effort, should we be removing 100%? Should we, uh, is it okay? I'm sure the students wouldn't mind not raking. <laughs> Yeah, so that treatment is a hay treatment, right? So that's why we're removing uh, hay, this simulated grazing. simulated grazing hay. Uh, I think that we well, where the opportunity is is to add a cover crop similar to that in one of the, those flexible treatments and make sure that they are never fallow, for example. Um, but let me see if we have a, do we have a treatment list on this computer? Maybe I have on that presentation. Oh, 
Yeah, yeah, let me share these. So, so I got this table here from the OneDrive. Uh, I had it updated until the fall of last year. So whatever went to Interfalo or with Brain or <coughs> In this case here, critically, hey, I know that it's updated up to here, but it's not reflecting corn or alfalfa here on the summer crop. So I need to make sure that I have that the latest map from from uh, from you guys there as well, just for us to update these. But um, so I think the hay ones we see here, right? It's it's one of these two treatments here, which are the dual purpose intensive, right? Or the semi I should say. Uh, the yellow one or uh, gray? So we only had the, the treatment number two and the 12 and 13, I guess. Okay, so that one was okay. Mm -hmm. Then two, these two. Yeah. Okay. So where we could implement some some cover crops for sure will be here on this treatment. We can make it very uh, much more aggressive in terms of not having any follow there if we want to. Um, and then we need to kind of define here on the on, on the last ones where we originally had the pepper and the moth. If we're going to go back to trying those, what we're going to do with the alfalfa as well, are we terminating it or are we uh, leaving it longer? So some of the things that we kind of need to discuss on the field portion here. Well, the adaptive number two, at least the, my understanding is that is depending on the weather. So whether you plant uh, uh, summer cover and uh, moisture, because it's adapting to the preset. So yeah, if we have plenty of water, then we go to uh, uh, summer. Somewhat dependent on whether it is. Uh, so I guess the other one is that the plus 15 is there. Um, I'm not, I'm not suggesting, I'm just saying, you know, that was a comment about, um, from Justin about, you know, the sun cover. And then we, and the students were saying that it's taken forever to rake all everything off. And maybe, maybe that don't think it's enough. That, that's my only question. I'm not saying that what we should or should not do. And that's maybe what I'm going to have to do. Hey, Justin, how are you? Okay. It's not the end. Yeah, so uh, the hay ones, they are in the, in the treatments that originally were proposed as, as a dual purpose, right? So do we want to, to modify them in the sense of leaving it there and not using as hay? Or we can plan ahead and here, for example, this year, plant a cover crop now in the winter and terminate that boot for the next follow crop over there, or for the next summer crop. This year, we decided to go all the way for grain because the conditions were pretty good. I think we harvested 60 plus bushels per acre wheat. <laughs> yeah, pretty good. So we said, well, let's not, let's not terminate the crop because the potential was good. Um, but if we intentionally already plant uh, uh, triticale, we will have to terminate it. And then that could help with that weed control probably in those plots as well. And, I've seen that in, in Justin's farm that one time, two, two neighboring fields, one that had triticale before the other one didn't. Weed control was, was well, the neighbors didn't, right, Just On the soybean, it was a lot of difference there on the weed control, but. <clears throat> we can also put a, a winter cover following the sorghum, since right now it's winter fallow. 
Yeah, that, that definitely. So that will be in treatment 10 and 11 here, right? Or somewhere along these lines. Cover right. the crop there, not leaving it bare. Yeah, and, and that's a really good comment because that's those are the treatments that originally we were 100% cover in the in the soil and we kind of just added the winter fowl, right? So these treatments eight through eleven here, originally they were the well they are still the intensive, but we didn't have any fallow. And we added a winter fallow. So maybe we don't need this winter fallow and we just need cover all the time here, which was the original plan anyways. And I think a lot of the one of the reasons why we kind of did that is to do too much intensive things down on this neck of the woods. Eventually you run out of water. There's just no way you can get around it. So the thought was be intensive for a while, take a little bit of time off, let the water profile kind of recover, and then go back into some more intensive stuff. So I think that's the logic for having that winter fallow in there. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but I don't know if it Now, with a cover crop, if you, you're not going to get much out of it, I don't think, in, in over the winter. But if you terminate it a little early, maybe you can capture enough water uh, in April, early May to get that next summer crop going. So it, it could work. We'll terminate it at the second load or at the at, at the boot stage not later than that and that would give maybe a couple of weeks there before planting even the other question is what foul what kind of cover are we going to plant we're going to just put a cereal in there do we want to do something specific uh a mix so <clears throat> here on these treatments while one is in soybeans the other one is in sorghum right or here we're doing corn so maybe we want a legume before the, the, the cereal and a cereal before the, the legume. So we'll have always that uh, flip-flop there. So maybe uh, treat kale or something before the soybeans. So in, in this case here, uh, it would be for next year, years uh, treatments 10 and 11 will go for uh, a cereal like a treat kale. And here the treatments 8 and 9 that are going to go to sorghum or corn, they could be planted for a uh, with, with, a, with a legume or now what would we plant as a legume there, I guess. Right, it's, a, it's an important question. <laughs> Field piece. So the challenge always is how late, you know, corn this year is gonna be really late, sort of going late, being successful in establishing a, a cover. So thinking, you know, how can we get it interceded in there in order to get it going? I think that was one of the other reasons we did fallow is that well, as late as it's getting. So, like, corn might win almost. So, they eight and nine? Uh, yeah, so it's, uh, so that, that is okay. Right. But in, in the, the winter fallow following. Yeah. You know, I think, I think that's an important consideration. Um, my experience has been, you know, we're seeing pretty clearly up to Thanksgiving, or week or Christmas behind sorghum. Um, and, and rye, I think, is even more. You use it as even a little more aggressive as capturing that any warm days in the winter and especially in the spring and we're getting still pretty really good growth um in the spring even even seeding that late uh, and I, you know the comment about using up moisture is really valid I, you know i think ash and bottoms you know just kind of my opinion is we're kind of the central the 135 corridor and east i think is Probably most average years gets enough uh, spring moisture to recharge in May. That that uh, that, that water that the that the winter cover uses. Uh, I think there west it, it gets kind of questionable. Uh, I think ash and bottom. You know, I think my opinion is to be comfortable pushing that up, getting that weed control benefit. Allowing it to go more mature, but I don't know how many plots you have, you know, west too in, in Oklahoma that you can treat everything. Mm -hmm. and, and it could be somewhat adaptive in the sense that some winters it will die and other winter springs it will be not so fine. You, you just gallow out and not take up the moisture. 
Um, so, so what about aerial distribution of the seed before the crop is even harvested? Well, there's a lot of that, you know, there's increasingly that happening, and especially these hangies that uh, ADAG is planted around the state. Uh, I've seen a lot of those field days, uh, even as far west, you know, north central, there's in Jewel County, I know there's farmers using that and getting success. I think it's uh, uh, our dryland system is a little bit more successful than aerial seeding over the top of the canopy. So I haven't seen it done as much in sorghum as corn, but I think getting that seed down there, and again, in Ashland Bottoms, kind of Flint Hills and East, I, I think that would be something to do. Yeah, that's a good point. Is you, you think the aerial, just because it's too dry? I think the aerial, too much it gets hung up in the can. Yeah. Uh, I think the key to those hagies is getting those crops down, get that seed down to the soil surface below mm -hmm. the leaf. Uh, I'm not familiar with the Haggies, so, uh, so. So they have like, air, they have nozzles that go between the rows, oh, so you're actually putting it down. But they're still broadcasting the seeds or not? They're not, they're not planting it, they're blowing it, it or. It's not so, well, yeah. Well, our, our aerial seed would probably be, right? So. That's why you can do the level of Mm-hmm, yeah. 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 Right now. And, and so I also agree, but they had more rain, but I don't know if helping. But I, I, I saw a lot of that in action sometimes. Okay. And, and I could see how a cereal could do that and, and do okay if you broadcast through the gate or something. It's, it's going to come up, right? It's what happened with harvest losses and everything that comes up after. What about, I mean, I, I have the feeling like peas are going to be more sensitive to. To a good seed step, I mean, seed to soil contact. And no, we gotta find the people that have the under seeders that actually can drill between those. Mm -hmm. So we can have an extra time of barrel age, a couple of rows down. Yeah. You'll be going after soybeans, though, right? So, yeah, that's true. They'll, they'll they'll have have if, if you use a broadleaf ahead of your corn and sort of there, so. Mm -hmm. so, are these winter peas, they survive well here? Depends on the system that we use. Right now, taking everything the fixation to see how much we are having to finish in the fabric. We are talking on the fixation side to see how much that is. Most of the inside are testing days only, and then we have new studies in the So far, we are doing okay. And they have a nice color. A nice color. I mean, I don't know if. The question that we discussed with Justin last week, we don't know exactly that is the best. And that's the point. We know that is the best. That's a, 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 known, a known question. Could you do a mix with the with the brass or not? We could if you want. In this, in that is, if that is the thing we're looking at, we can do it. So you get, you get brass to do this motor type of that. Yeah, but again, we, yeah, don't, know, yeah. we don't know. I mean, maybe Jake doesn't know much about, we were talking about the about these, that we were talking about, thinking of using barley or, or veg, he wants to do this. Yeah. I say be careful because if you start mixing, the names are quite sensitive to the veg. So unless you just put the, the rates down on the on the grass, or even if you go with the grass, you can you will not find much there. Okay. You need to have like a red or white one, something like that. Oh, yeah, one piece, one piece, because we've done the critical piece next. We trade here, I guess, for a couple of people. You would not find much. A little better, but you still have to balance it. Yeah, so Josh Lofton makes a comment here. He's in the point of that some of these has a chance to fail. It's a fail crop. It's a good data to have. Yeah. The next crop dies because of lack of moisture. And yeah, that's that's good result too, right? Yeah. So that's that's the idea here to push, see how far we can yeah, push. I mean, that's the whole plan to grow is the pushing the to see how much you can crush. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I mean, when you step there, there's a difference between time and time. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. So I think that that goes back to the original plan that we had for the intensive, which is always something growing. Yeah. Uh, and then 
the difference between what we had originally planned and these that they were going to be terminating as cover crops there. And I think to me, it sounds like a step in the right direction. So um, from if we would do the, the aerial seeding simulation there on the for the, for the trip daily, um, we could do as early as, as in September or something like this to try and increase the chances of it coming up. And yeah, yeah we're, we're, <laughs> we're, we're probably going to be Sorry. playing. <laughs> So if we go that route, the only thing that we've done so far that wouldn't, I mean, it's just the treatment eight and nine that had a week, uh, winter fallow so far. So it, that's very, I mean, we can still kind of incorporate the treatments 10 and 11, they are still, they, they are, they have been cropped since the beginning. They, they haven't had a fallow period yet. So it still gives us at least two observations, two full years or even three of observations there, so. You may, you know, you may, on that aerial seeding, there hasn't been much of it done in sorghum, I think, I don't know why, I'm sure. I don't know, sorghum may be a little bit more difficult than corn, getting that aerial or that critically established or by established just on the surface, since it goes a little later in the season. Yeah. So you may be able to be adaptable to there if the aerial doesn't work after a harvest and say, oh, we don't have anything growing, it's still growing in the season. Yeah, so we could give it a try on the aerial and see by, by time of harvest in November or something, if it's not established, we're still, we're planting at that point in time after other crops anyways, we could still plant it, so. So does that sound like a plan for that, that we should pursue here? I guess that's the feeling that I'm having. So on the planting of those peas, uh, anything that we need to be, I, I have never worked with it. So if we are using my equipment to do that, row spacing and everything, or, or do, do we, so is it a drill? Is it work gonna work fine? Or? It will work fine. I mean, if I only go sand, I mean, from thinking about the discussion that we had yesterday, it's like, we can add it to the system right here, but I think that we still need some formal testing on the, what are the best conditions. So we, I just, I think we answered yesterday. That's also not an issue, so that's not a problem. Uh, um, we need to think about how we can. What are the options to optimize the system and what are the options that we have in terms of seeds and legumes or grasses? That's, I think about another type of study or, or idea that we can then enter with some more knowledge. Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, with the, with the uh, meat, for example, the variety is going to be one big question. I don't know what variety. There are just general trimming because we are having this computer. Not way too many. Not much difference in biomass production. I mean, there are some different but there are not that many varieties that we need to use. But again, the questions are of planting it. Do we go after we finish a lake one, or do we just go immediately after the soil? So you can get the crop out quickly. Um, is it best if you plant corn the next year if it goes to summer crop? Is it best to go to early season summer crop or to late season summer crop? Yeah. And those are questions. And the winter survivability, I think, is the big question in my mind of these broadleaves. You know, we're, we're trying rapeseed to mix in, and, and if we get it in September, we're marginally successful. But if it's 
but it's after mid-October, which is not successful. The other option I thought about is if we need to broadly the head of that grass, yeah, maybe we instead of doing, I'd love to have, much, much prefer to have a late fall seeding of it, but if we just can't find something that can overwinter, then maybe we push that to like February. That's that's uh, a little bit. Yeah. I've seen uh, success with that. Yeah. 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 You, get that you get the spring moisture. Yeah. You know, it, it, it's sometimes can be, I've tried spring oats before, that can be difficult to get across the acres because of being more wet and cold in, in that window. Uh, if you just can't get something over winter, that spring would be like the secondary option. And then Ignacio, your question of do we let that grow out and then push our corn plant date back later? That's not going to be outside the scope of this here, but some of your secondary type of work is. <coughs> we have some the same thing now. I don't know, are you all immediately like last week of September? I mean, on the date is to start putting like pushing personal and how are you? That's a challenge of putting something after something. Mm -hmm. The only way to put it is maybe just to, so or you wait. Well, I have seen a lot of success that we did one time we tried canola and turbo. That's kind of my spring canola. Do you think canola would if you if we brought gas canola? Do you think it would? Or because yeah. you don't need to sit it too deep, right? But it probably still needs another one, but again. The only challenge is you should be putting that canola now, now on the corn or on the soy. But, so we're, we're, we're planning probably the next, within the next 10 days, the first planting time for us. So if that's something that we need to, to, to do, we can already do that. Would be an option here? Or would the only way that canola would succeed? And do you think broadcasting it? Or, or, have you seen any? There, there, is no, there any no, date on that? No. no. I don't think it'll survive. I know that I think that will survive if we have this full service. Mm -hmm. That's an issue. If you're, in full season, if you're in full season soybeans, I don't know how you would be able to intercede yeah. through that. That's, that's, that's a good point. Yeah. Buy it. I mean, that's after when the soybeans come out. This is going to be part of it. Yeah, we're seeing what, what fit their head of the corn seed and grass. Am I right? Is that, or is all the soybeans going to be? Um, <clears throat> um, we're just looking at five other soybeans. Well, there's some soybeans we have, so it's kind of. Yeah, there is, there's there's some wheat that, yeah, there's some wheat after soybeans. I think we're talking about. Uh, yeah, the only follow winter follow that we had was after serving because of the uh, how late we're harvesting. Yeah, have a, you know, you've got wheat, you've got soybeans, wheat going. So, summer uh, on line 10 and 11, is that double crop sorting there after, after you harvest the grain off that wheat? Yes. 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 Yeah. We're very so late planting. You don't planted. have a. You don't have a well, we're corn now. We can't hang that camp. It's that sort because it's sort of too But but that's that's a good point. Just so if we're following what we had proposed here, really the, the only option that we have for a cover crop is before the soybeans, not before the, the yeah, corn. We're not okay. Okay. I have a question: Is a is a winter crop? Are we trying to make money out of it, or is it just a true cover? Because I mean, we could use something like turnips that's going to cover the ground, but it's not really going to add anything value wise. Management. 
workers. Um, yeah, not, I haven't quite exceeded that late. I don't know what Doug's done. They don't have to make it. The problem is that, again, the main issue that when I'm seeing this, my main issue is the plan. Yeah. Well, I mean, How would you go from doing another study looking at this specific? Right. Mm -hmm. I mean, the trigger battery or rye, I mean, those are easy to manage and kind of that seems like the I mean, an easy option for those two is to figure out some other options. And, and I had just mentioned here that the only opportunity for cover crops was after the, the cereals or before the soybeans, but that's just for treatments eight through 11. Of course, treatment three, we can, we can put a legume there as a cover in the winter. So we can do that. It's just not in these treatments here. It could be up there. And right now, you can actually remember what the adaptive is planted with, is it? Soybeans, corn. Uh, summer, yeah, the corpse, so right? Yeah. Corpse, so. No, that, that's down at the bottom. No, sorry, the picture. The adaptive grain, the, the number two up there. Well, what I think the corn was like, from uh, what we talked about yesterday, is that maybe if you don't take as much data and not too much change in the disease plot, or rather take some of these ideas and, and work side. Right. Like projects, so I think uh, maybe that's what we need to think in not starting to change here. I think it's still good discussion, but you know, we probably need to do separate plots to look at the states and that's all. So, mm -hmm. so, yeah. But I think having just a um, set of winter cover on these, yeah, but, but other rides or so, so, a question that I have about some of these satellite projects, right? Because we can discuss them a lot, but is there funds for us to do that? Because, you know, the that they, they can take quite a bit of money if you're going to plant a lot of different cover crops and test different varieties. And no, I, I don't that's why that's why I was saying that I mean at least I got the message. That's why also I got a Skype yesterday before getting to you guys dinner. Yes, a lot. Um the only way that we can do it is the cat back. The cat back here. We just focus on saying they go to only measure four treatments or less treatments. We will capture it, but we will focus on less intense, more intense. So then, with the equal amount of time that he has, will invest his time in a different way. But at least it's for him too. The motivation is that he's thinking that we are doing something innovative that we might probably crash, most likely. But we know that we are trying to take a risk and do something different. And I'm with you. And we will get more funds, more resources, and we'll be limited on what we can get done. We put it, uh, we, are doing, we are talking about an option of looking at different winters, and then we come up with corn and soybeans, uh, planting a different month, early and late. And then with that, you will start having some data on options of, for the winter, and then what happens when you start changing planning in terms of uh, for the summer crop. And it's just a small piece because it's not even looking at it's mm -hmm. just looking at one small section that you might just say it looks like for corn this is the best combination when you are this time of the year planning for maybe another the best combination when you're late. Mm -hmm. And it's just a small piece and maybe we will not be able to do a lot but we will be able to collect some data on uh, Cover before the planting, planting date, uh, soft technology, and yields. Yeah, but at least having the winter supply like this year, we know what the plant is going to get done. Yeah, that, 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 that's more or less the idea. But yeah, the only way that would work is that if we come up also with an strategy to think about, uh, you want to mention these systems, like from all the treatments, to revisit and saying which are the ones that we we might need to say, okay, we can focus more on it rather than just to focus on all. Because who know you? The, the fans are the same. That, that side. Yeah, you
Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> that is bring it up, right? <laughs> so much you want to grow it. <laughs> we, we always give it a try, right? So, <laughs> yeah, no, because the main thing I think, I mean, I agree with you, and we could do the same thing for wheat, right? To test several different summer cover crops and then how the wheat responds later on. And maybe it's not so much a splinting date, but maybe a variety, right? So, which variety is going to respond better to the different, but uh, that. Those small, they're not small. They're they're full trials by themselves. You know? I mean, the other option is to use this and go out to recommission or some other funding agency and say, try to get some. Get a little bit of money. Probably a little bit of a message from Josh. Yep, yep, we discussed this one. Yep, thanks, Sai. Yeah. Yeah, that, that would be a good seat, wouldn't it? Yeah. Sir, it would be a good seat, wouldn't it? Yeah. I mean, that's a, the, the shift for some synergy to provide a platform for other funding. So that's a pretty proposal. Yeah. And now, now if we think of it of a little bit different way, because yesterday I was talking to we were talking to Jason Warren, and he was saying, uh, Jeff, my previous advisor, already did cover crops on the, before wheat. Then he did that as well. Jeff's predecessor did, and Alex Rocatelli did. So, what about just summarizing the data that is available, right? Without needing to reinvent the wheel. Um, is there the data for the summer crops? Apparently for, for a continuous wheat situation where we're just looking at the summer crop in between those two wheat crops, apparently there is enough of data available that somebody could, could summarize that. Uh, but I don't know for the summer crops. But you should summarize it, then other some things that add value, you know, gaps and then figure out that. But yeah, to say a grant or, you know, some commission grants or others, you know, might be ways to Supplement how how large are Sarah, Sarah grants? I don't think um, that's this one can get to a couple hundred total. So if we don't need we, if we don't cover another student and, and we would use the resource that we have on these in terms of personnel, we could probably put a winter and a summer trial with that with those funds i know what you're saying and i was just asking you guys can say when we were doing the last year our best team after we started we started we start planning Last year was the, the previous year, so we didn't work well, so we started looking for maybe we start looking at corn and soy. So. And, and then we start planting corn, we pick, we, we don't have that much. Food. So we start putting some plots, and then, yeah, that satellite study got big. It's like we have 100 plots. No, oh, yeah. 100 plots planted in two moments. Uh, early. <laughs> No, no, I mean, it's the only way to do it because now I've like, got uh, you could test like CRMs from 70, 80, 90, 100, 110. I mean, just to make sure that mm, they're covering the maturity. How the reading for corn has been done in a way that was always thinking about a plant adapted to this area, planted at this moment. Mm -hmm. So it's 111 days, 150 days, whatever it is. But when you move it, you don't know what kind of animal. You have. And the recommendations are yeah, you should be using an extended season if you plan the lake. Who knows? And really, like who has that? Farmers have more data in terms of switching uh, by experience, but we didn't have any data. And the only way to do it well is to capture something, although it's a year, it's just to have all sets of technology. So Lucas has also somewhat similar, right? Yeah, I'm corn, some on corn, yes. Uh, I'm not planting that land. No. Because it's usually going to be a personal 
first week of June. So we put the lots that we put, for example, this year, this year we put in the fourth, fourth July. And, and the other term and the last week of July. Last week of July. Yeah. And almost likely we will crash part of this time. We'll say 80% my estimation. So how many planting dates are you looking at? We are looking at eight planting dates on any <coughs> But we will get enough data to understand if you are looking at a modeling of this information, you need to know what is your optimal date, optimal date, what is the optimal combination of CRM between those optimal dates. What are the adjustments that you need to do on densities? Mm. And that only these small questions they require like a hundred points. Yeah. <laughs> no, I, I, I see your point completely. I'm not I'm not against of anything. I'm just saying that before I touch too much this one, probably we we'll think about how we can add some more information. So Sarah Grant, 250,000. Up to three years. Maybe it's a possibility to test uh, Windows other options and then think about doing a formal study. More formal. Okay, so I think we have a we have a few things that we discussed here. Now the we kind of decided not to touch this one too much, but we agreed on putting the three TK before the soybean, right? Just so we can plan on that from our side for this next ten days. Okay, and then if we're gonna do anything on that legume, it will be on the adaptive, which is already kind of adaptive anyway. So it's a kind of so we're not touching this one as much. We're kind of keeping it very close to the original there. And then we can go after maybe some of these grants, but when when is the SARE grant due, Anita? Uh, Pre-proposal October. October 1, I believe. October 7. 7, okay. And that's uh, like a couple it's pages. It's a pre-proposal, it's, it's fairly short. Um, and then the will be the one proposal. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. It's a template online. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so maybe we can look into putting 250,000, three years, we could probably put a study. If, if, the, if the students will, from this project, will take care of that, we could probably put a study on cover crop, summer covers on wheat and, and winter covers on corn, soybeans. And that's one of the outcomes of the project is how many other salaries might Okay, okay. Oh yeah, that's a good point, Juana. So, what what are we doing on these two? So, where uh, do home? Where is alfalfa planted? Which one of these do we have alfalfa now, or Hudra? I think that the uh, uh, seventeen. So it's just the last one. And what do we have on sixteen? Forage, forage, sorry. Forage, sorry. Okay. Um, and the plan of the alfalfa is that a uh, longer term? We're going to leave it there and continue well, sampling. It may not be easy to maintain alfalfa as a frame. I think that's it. The some that go there and ship more. I don't know how, how many farmers are going to do that. <laughs> that kind of a problem. So you're. As I said, this is more as a green manure. Yeah. Like very short temporary. A nitrogen for the power crop. Okay, so we will terminate it now and, and yeah. plant uh, yeah. for hay. And lastly, we have enough uh, moisture, all the way to find it um, second week of, you know, first or second week of July. We have plenty of uh, moisture to farm. It's about 40 centimeters right now. So, about... so the question here do we need to? To terminate it, or or should we oversee the drip scale on it? And because many many farmers grow alfalfa with a companion crop, right? right? That will decrease the quality, but it will improve uh, probably increase the the biomass.
Is it possible? Yeah. Can I ask the size? I think is big enough. Yeah, we're working right now with some, but they are five or five years, and they are really. You can still go back and get it. Yeah. Well, you know, the default standard is from I, so um, the right of the 2019, that summer, is that 2021 then? Summer, is that what's right now? Summer 2021. Uh, right here, yes. This, this column here. So, yeah, we planted everything to eat in the first fall 2019. This was last year. Then this was this last winter season, and currently it's here. But there is a couple of changes that we need to do here. And um, so, wait, it's here, right? On this one. Yeah, we need to we need to do a few changes, but mostly Justin. So, yeah. Yeah, so mostly here it's, uh, I believe it's summer fall in the adaptive. Oh, okay. Okay. Uh, on the adaptive forage or the grain or both. Okay. Well, even the wheat that was harvested for hay here pretty early. So here, Justin should be corn instead of sorghum, and then here it should be forage soybeans, and here it's alfalfa. So probably on this alfalfa, we, I mean, I'll be tempted to just oversee the triticale on it and then continue sampling it at least through next spring. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. And then here, where you would have the forage soybeans, we just go for triticale normally and for hay as well. Based on our So uh, adaptive forage and adaptive grain, if they're both on summer fallow now, what do we plan on doing? Yeah, probably on the grain, I wouldn't plant it yet, but on the hay, I could already plant it. Yeah, we could. So Luan, if you want to write it down. So. Okay. It will get at least mid-October. Okay. So those are the first ones that you can take. Excellent. Yeah, and, and that's one thing that showed in the first year of data as well. The one is going to show later on that um, even the ones planted after soybeans, but the ones that could go early, you did really well, but the ones that went way late. The problem with the one of soybeans. So then, uh, so everything this fall of 2021 
everything is going to either weeds or could be we cover or could be the case. So, but here will be 3 dk Lee cover crop now, right? Um, now, on the treatment tree, which is the adaptive grain, we don't need to go for it. We could do a canola or something like that, right? It's it's adaptive. So, or we can add, as we were talking, a legume cover to go for for our corn later. But, but then next year would be well, I guess there's some yeah, yeah. so it could be the only half. So that yeah. So maybe yeah, that's a good So a couple of things that we need to discuss is these adaptive treatments, what we're gonna do, right? The wheat for hay, we can plant it right away, no problem. Then the adaptive grain, should we do something different, like a canola, or should we do right. if you're gonna go to corn, then you would do your pea, you do a pea now. Right. Plant a winter pea now, we're good, yeah. But for grain, so we have a piece of grain. Oh, well, possibly. Well, so I mean, you get it away for. Yeah, the idea is. Well, but we have in the summer, summer and then get summer and corn. But like in the first summer, for that grain, we have to purpose cow feed. So, um, so we have to. The options one, canola, and then you can So they harvest a little bit earlier, right? Then the wheat. And you'd probably be able to plant that a little bit before the double crop soybeans after wheat, right? Or pretty similar. Okay. So then, so then the next summer, summer 22, that yes, that column. So those soybeans and sorghum are going in immediately after the harvesting. Like that. That yes. That mm -hmm. Whatever, we'll never have wheat grain here followed by a summer crop. They are planted immediately after. And sometimes they're pretty late. Back to wheat and sorghum then is going to go Yeah, so these winter fallow and these winter fallow would actually be three TK leaf as a cover. Yeah. <laughs> This year we ended in, in July. But uh, a year ago was we anticipated we harvest was in uh, well, no, remember the year before we were ready to harvest and then it rained for 10 days, right? So we were late harvesting. Right? So we took two days and we could always get another weather. Yeah. But, uh, we moved on the weather. So if the weather is bad for wheat, we would have be harvesting meat too. Mm -hmm. So if it's pretty hot and dry in May there, probably mid-June can be done. Um, now, this, this year we were done harvesting before last year, but then there was that gap with the farm crew just because of the, I think that they combined, they had a bit available right away in the same day, uh, wouldn't leave the residue in a nice way, so they waited until the next one. So just, it, I mean. Yeah, it was, it was done five days. It was like five days, I think. Yeah, I, I don't think it was too bad. I mean, uh, Dustin said he could do right away, but the combine would not leave the best residue. Yeah. And so we decided to wait until the, the, the better combine. The, the idea on the dual purpose intensive, that, that uh, theoretically the most intense system or uh, production thing forward no, so you see like from, so these three treatments here, well, I should say from four through 11, they are green densities of grain only. And then from 12 through 17, they're green densities of the, of the dual purpose. So they should be the most intensive out of this, this group here from 12 through 17. Yeah, so the, my only 
things are, I don't know, maybe Justin can correct me too, but like uh, using uh, green and internal strips, or, I, I really, yeah. I, I don't understand very mm -hmm. well, but um, I, <laughs> I don't know a whole lot to like. Yeah, that. that's a good I'm comment. Because Luana was bringing this to my attention because uh, the most intensive is the green end, but actually, you look at the plots, they're probably the worst looking plots because there was no nitrogen left behind. Yeah, I mean, I agree with Luana. Like, we discussed this yesterday. Uh, like, we also were saying, like, the winter we see a few trendy times in the future, but lower purpose. Mm -hmm. But, uh, like, from the previous experiment, if it is a weak green, then, then it's fine, but it wasn't better than the Yeah. Yeah, so maybe. Maybe we're, we shouldn't be calling it the most intensive, you know. Maybe we should be calling it like a. This was also again through those treatments where we try those two separate plots for those the intent. I don't know that was we intended to be the most intensive, but we intended to try. Really, mm -hmm. really to look at fine. Yeah, I should look at fine. Yeah, and it didn't work for us last year, but. Uh, that we're saying yesterday, I think we need to try it again, uh, maybe not here, but somewhere else. Yeah. Uh, as we're trying to look for some new species, something different, right? And mm -hmm. also, another point is that we don't need to confuse intensity with yields. Because one has yeah, to say true. intensity mm -hmm. about getting a crop in, in the soil, maybe try to have coverage, versus saying that if I don't put a crop, I will get more yield. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's you true. Put another crop, you get more yeah. yeah. So remember, if I do a summer fallow, yeah, the wheat will be more. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So remember, the, the goals of the project is to reduce or increase end use efficiency and increase precipitation efficiency. So yield doesn't necessarily. It, it might be more profitable to use green nitrogen and increase end use efficiency. With yeah. that, I think that's what the purpose was. Look at the I think that we call intensity because mm -hmm. more because we were saying if you look at the yeah. fair benchmark with the other the treatments, yellow and brown <coughs> colors. I mean, are basically you always have in the summer you have some, yeah. the other ones we don't have any. Mm -hmm. and yeah. That's intensity, it's intensity of basically the rotation. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, so, that's true. So, yeah, so okay, so the intensity here we we're talking about number of crops and not per se. Like how intensive you are uh, treating the system. Okay. Reduce the last problem, then you see the number. Because you could yeah. have, yeah. have 50 percent more human weight, but if I put a productivity or a soil or a soil that adds more productivity overall in the system, it might be over increased productivity compared to the real. And then in terms of use efficiency, <coughs> whatever calculation of use efficiency you will have. Will always be more efficient when you have more productivity for your water or your right. right. Overall, in the system, not by crop. Not by crop, yeah. Not not by crop. Crop. yeah. That's the problem now. We need to avoid looking at by crop. Yeah. Yeah. Doing this by crop. Yeah. Yeah. We got five years. Yeah. Yeah. We need to be careful yeah. about doing the crop. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, that's true. Yeah. Yeah. That's a really good, important discussion. Uh, so I'm really excited about the South Alpha thing. Maybe get going, kind of having it as a perennial mixed into that green system and seeding into it some handles. I think that would be, I think that's really uh, interesting. Uh, the forage, the forage soybeans, um, one, one consideration there may be, you know, I know when our summer covers are too heavy broadly, we don't have enough um, uh, warm season fast growing grass and then we really far to be control. So, Maybe uh, adding a mill in there with those forage soybeans might be increase biomass a little bit and some weed competition also. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Are you changing the, the rate there, testing? Are you using the same rate on um, soybeans or are you using the same temperature? I think you would probably drop your soybean rate a little bit. Okay. Yeah. That's a good suggestion. I used some farmers in Maryland actually they uh it'll see out they trick alley into alfalfa sand and then make silage in the following uh, springtime. So I think like, that's the idea. So on the on the millet on the part soybean, should that be something on the adaptive treatment then? 
so we don't change what we've done so far on the bottom here or as those two are kind of flexible so far anyways right we started with moss and pepper and then went to alfalfa and forage soybeans so um either we keep these alfalfa and forage soybeans kind of through the end here so they they will have consistency there or, or we kind of need to call them adaptive but we do have the the place up here where we already had forage soybeans to have a forage soybeans again here with the with a millet on our adaptive forage yeah just thinking of on the long run consistency how Hudra is going to take care of, of of the data later right so I, I really like the idea then I think we could compare the forage soybeans with millet here versus the forage soybeans here by itself yeah that, that's a really good discussion I think we're we're, we're fine tuning things here so just for us to, to to go over these and I'm not writing anything down so one of would you may take these notes baseline keep it as is adaptive forage we will go for wheat hay now and then summer well forage swiping plus millet on the next year adaptive grain we are discussing right is it going to be canola winter peas is it going to be wheat i'd rather do some other crops we have variability there because it's adaptive anyways right so we can try uh, we are back some kind of other okay and we will be planting the plots in probably 10 days so we, we could coordinate and do the canola as well so um, canola works really well in Oklahoma so I don't know uh, Brian how 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 have you guys treated Brian Travis the adaptive forge and adaptive grain so far are we in the same boat here or? Yeah, I think we are. Uh, uh, I, I think treatment two, we planted back to forage soybeans again, and then treatment three, we did summer fallow. Okay. So the only difference so far is that you had forage soybeans on treatment two. So if we go for wheat hay on that one, and then, and then would you be able to do a canola on treatment three? Uh, <laughs> I don't know if I want to go into canola or not. Are you talking as a grain crop? Canola uh, as grain. I think so, as a grain crop, yeah. Uh, the problem is nobody down here is growing canola. Value's not there, cash-wise, I guess, because I haven't seen canola for three years at all, not even in a test plot. So whether we do that, I don't know. Uh, um, we were also discussing the possibility of something like a winter pea just for as, as a cover to the next grass in the summer. Um, Although having a summer fallow now and then going for a cover seems like a waste of mm -hmm. water to me there. I wonder if you can stay with wheat there but if you're trying to keep two and three somewhat similar between forage and grain. So it's an option. It would be probably planted at a prime time there after a fallow. So it's probably going to be a pretty good conditions for this wheat crop. So let's let's put this one on hold for now. Uh, here everything kind of maintains the same, and then we get to this winter fallow here. It goes to triticale. So treatment ten and eleven, we go for a cover crop triticale. Then. Treatment 16, which is currently soybeans, go to treat the Kaley hay. And treatment 17, which is currently alfalfa, we just probably plan on having a less alfalfa cut and seeding it right away. So Oklahoma did moth and tapery. So 
I think then you guys would continue with that, right, uh, Brian, Travis? Yeah, yeah, yeah. We we had a much better th year this year with the uh, cover crops. So, excellent. Last yeah. year was just a weird anomaly. Not, it didn't seem to grow anywhere. I planted in multiple experiments. It just didn't go. This year it seems to be a lot, a lot happier. Okay. Yeah. So Josh mentions that canola is its best value. It's been in years, so we should have acres this year. But long term, still, still a question. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I know locally here, nobody's planted canola for grain in at least three years, possibly four. Uh, you just hardly ever see it grown. I don't know if it's just that there's no, no place to market it down here other than possibly Enid, which is the shipping cost would probably eat you alive getting it up there. Um, but uh, you know, we could do it. Uh, I mean, it's something. Whether it's whether it's actually relevant to what the producers are doing down here, I do not know. Well, honestly, I mean, the, the baseline is already a wheat after fallow, right? So if you're going to do the adaptive, a wheat after fallow as well, it's going to be, it's not going to add a whole lot there. Uh, so that's why I'm, I'm, from my end, I'm super flexible on this number three here. And it gives us more diversity. Yeah, even though it's not maybe a crop yet, it might be. There's enough variety to Kind of like the idea of having a, a, a brassica growing there as well, rather than just a cereal. I thought that, I mean, <clears throat> that's here, Canada, it's I know that we have challenges, so land processing, there's a challenge to people. I think that is, yeah. I think that yeah. we are thinking about future and diversity. Right. I know that should be consistent. Bio, yeah, and that's bio my, fuels, and I'm yeah. very humble. Yeah, well, like 10 years ago, cotton was the king of the thing. Now it's dominant. Um, and I know that acres are non existent. Yeah. It's, it's crazy, but I've heard several farmers mm -hmm. uh, that I see a pretty aggressive running the goal of it, they can incredibly high to the produce. And they're talking about yeah. growing seeds in the goal of this fall. Pricing yeah. it and just buy on trucks and get up to the totals. Oh, wow. So, you know, I know the marketing is tricky. It's not going to be, not, certainly not going to see every farmer or even the majority doing it, but uh, there is interest in that, having diversity in that drastic uh, we're missing in most of our system. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So maybe. Well, yeah, it's an adaptive. It's there for us to give it a try, right? So, so Brian, if you guys agree with that, we could we could go with the canola on treatment tree. Uh, Josh had another comment here. We had seven thousand acres last year, all around North Central Oklahoma. Well, there's there's nothing down here in Central Oklahoma, so. Oh, well. And also, because we have problems with the processing plants, one of those at the end, so that is also important. And, and Canada is, is not an easy program. We really need to, to work with farmers in a country to work with them. I think that is, it's also, it's not only the harvest, I think that is, just in comment, but it's also the, the visual appearance. When you go in the winter and you see that crop, it's <laughs> devastating for some farmers. And the <laughs> they were like, it's really devastating. And also when you look at the growth section, and you look at the lack of uniformity which for many farmers when we talk about any job, we talk about uniformity so much. That crop has some response. Yeah. Well, so you know, it's a uniform not... crop. We see a lot of fuel. Exactly. Mm -hmm. But you can have that here yeah. and there, and it will grow well. Oh, it needs to be grow. It's, it's harvesting it and harvesting it. <laughs> and not as many canola, it's just adding seed to the ground directly. <laughs> <laughs> 
I mean, but if it's only one uh, one freshman, um, there are always students that can go there. What do we need to say? So, <laughs> <laughs> I mean, we've done it before. Uh, we do for the three crops of the three kale, the plot of the three kale. So it's one treatment, it's going to be four plots. The, the day. Not the one saying so. Yep. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, if they're they're besides, there's no option. <laughs> it's awesome, but <laughs> I'm saying if it get too like bad, because you, know. you guys did that just now a couple weeks ago, right? Oh, yeah, and then, actually, we are probably be doing this uh, every year for the plots that we had three kale and wheat, because there's always three kale coming over wheat. Mm -hmm. so, always some some bottom feet, yeah. It's not like just four plots. Okay, if we're gonna grow canola, is there a particular cultivar we want to try to go for? Cultivar. <laughs> yeah. Uh, can I suggest we do something that's Roundup ready for weed control? See, so he's suggesting uh, canola that is Roundup ready. Yeah. That gives us a little more flexibility for weed control because uh, we will probably have volunteer stuff. You know, coming up. So, what, what about the volunteer canola later? You can control that with other chemicals. Then right, you, you can use two four D to control that stuff. It's not really a problem. Yeah, I wrote cartridges for the herbicide program all the way through before I turned the brain. You've had so much stuff that. And, and is it even the same code for a national yeah, bottoms in Oklahoma? Oh, yeah, we're sounding just to close. It's not already. Yeah. Corn run already. Yeah. Control. Soon run already. That's part of the problem. I'm part of the problem. When I say I don't need that, I don't want to say that. I don't want to run the way it goes. Oh, God, it's just not safe. You know, from a true good, we can just try to do something. Yeah. <laughs> it shouldn't have everything messed up, but, you know, it's safe. But there's other products that make it worse from a drug standpoint. You know, that's, you know, there's potential we have just a former up there. So Misha suggested to use MCPA because canola is not susceptible to many synthetic auxins. Uh, so I don't think that, I mean, it, it, does canola do we, are we going to use the same code for in Ashland and in our Reno? No. Probably not, right? So if they want to go with the Roundup Ready, I mean, I don't. The weed management can can be different in, in both trials there. So Brian, I think there's there's definitely flexibility there. Okay, all right. Well, we uh, had one of them on the green farm trials where we had the EC systems. We were growing 100 acres of it a year for four years, and the cultivar we had was a Roundup tolerant one that really helped us with uh, a lot of the weed control for the next weed crop. So okay. Yeah, so again, I don't think we were going to use the same code for and, and so if we decide to go with something that is not Roundup ready, it's it's fine. Yep. Well, th this is really good. I think we kind of defined then what's going to go, what's going to be planted, not only this season, but the next one as well. And we fine tuned some of the other things that were more, that, that were loose, right? A little bit loose. So... Is there anything else that we need to be discussing on the treatments themselves? <laughs> okay. Right on time there. Yeah. yeah. Excellent. Yeah, that was good. So maybe we can just follow up on potential for that SARE grant uh, and, and see what we're trying to bring some more funds. <laughs> Yeah, well, I haven't updated this one, but we'll work with Luana there. And, and that's another thing as well. Where is the final file, right? Because <laughs> <laughs> So we, yeah, so I think our data was uploaded. Just this with treatments that is updated, at least we have the treatments there. 
And thus, as we get data, we start to pull the data as we can see. Yeah. So, right. Good. It's all side. And that was the folder that Amber still established when she was here, right? Because that's the one that we are using at least. But then I opened these and this was there. So, well, it's not the latest one. So it's a different folder. Yeah. Oh, it's a different folder. Oh, so it's not the same that Amber? No, I don't think it's the same Amber. It's the same, right? We have all the projects ever since starting to never do Okay. So we just need to designate the current project plan for in a folder and then tell everybody what that is. Yep. Yeah, that would be really helpful if uh Sai, could you help with that? Not just like sending everybody so this is where everything is. And, <laughs> and so everybody has the final. Yeah. yeah. And then, Luana, based on your notes, can you update? Yeah. Well, we can update together. These and just So let's look at six through nine. So those will be, that'll be double crop soybean in summer of 22, double crop sword on nine or eight, nine. Is that correct? Uh, corn or corn. Yes. That will be through double crops, planted after wheat harvest, both of those. Yes. And, and so, then your semi intensive will go back in weeds, which will be tied after that double crop soybean on fall of 22. Is that accurate? Yeah, we are already throwing weeds here. So here you see that we had, yeah, that, that's not because we still had soy, uh, wheat, soybeans, wheat, summer fallow, then wheat, soybeans, wheat. Yes, so that, that's true. It's pretty squeezed. So that's fine. That's okay. I'm just, and then what does it mean? Like, uh, then what would be, it says usual. I'm just curious how that plays out in, in the following year. Uh, thinking about uh, double crop soybeans. Going to weeds, then you've got your double crop sort of for the winter fallow, what that looks like in the intensive versus semi. I know it's kind of getting out there, but uh, I think it's important to think through that. Uh, so in eight and nine, you've got your sorghum, winter fallow, soybeans, double crop sorghum, winter fallow. Then does that go back to soybeans again, full season, or, or corn? I'm sorry. So it's corn, winter fowl, winter fowl. Would that go back to soybeans again? Then in 2023? Yeah. So treatments, for example, right? Eight through 11 can almost seen, be seen as one, but they are flip flopped in terms of years. <clears throat> and we do that so every crop is happening every year within those rotations, right? So we have two nitrogens there, like the normal and the progressive, they are eight and nine. And then they, they happen again in 10 and 11. And then the only difference is that the, the, the years are flip-flopped between 8, 9, and 10, and 11, so that every crop is happening every year. So these will not be a winter fallow. This will be a triticale cover crop right. right here, right, as we were just discussing before a soybean, which is going to extend to 2023, the project. Yeah. Now, the top one is same thing from 4 through 7. Again, they are the same thing, just flip-flopped in terms of years. Right, so uh, we had wheat, summer fallow, wheat, soybeans, then wheat, summer fallow, wheat, soybeans here again, and then just flip flop in terms of, in terms of years for six and seven. So, yeah, no, you're right on. We need to expand these and, and, and fulfill the, re the, the, the remaining years. Yeah. So, you're not growing a full season corn anywhere, is that right? Yeah. No. This is the double crop. Okay. Which, same, same as a, same on the intensive system. Well, we, now we could have a double season, uh, full season corn in the adaptive right after canola, for example. Okay. Right. So the adaptive, we could still have, if we want, a full season crop, uh, corn. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's true. Canola. Yeah. That, that would still be a double crop. Yeah. Yeah. Or we made the canola into a cover. I'm and trying to understand the, uh, 
the system laid out across the five years. And I, I know why you're doing that to kind of keep it so you get because you need to get a few through the cycle at least once. But it's curious to me a little bit just if there's not, you know, why you would, you know, the other option would be to do a, a wheat double crop soybeans, winter fallow, and then full season corn or full season sorghum. Again, that's kind of mixing up your, your what you've got laid out here. So it's okay. I just I was kind of curious about how, how that laid out. No, that's a that's a good comment. So we're essentially we don't have, I guess, what you're suggesting is that here instead of wheat, soybeans, wheat, then some are follow wheat again, we wouldn't have this wheat crop and we would go for a full summer crop. Well, actually, no, I'm looking for probably an intensive system. Okay. Uh, instead of doing double crop sorghum, do double crop soybeans uh, summer of 22 on the lines eight and nine, and then full season corn. I'm sorry. So that's more in that, in that half. So Kansas, in the fall of 20, summer 22, is double crop corn there, right? Yes. Instead yes. of doing double crop corn, do double crop soybeans. And then uh, full season corn in the fall of the year. Uh, some, summer of 23. And then you could put a winter cover after that double crop soybean was ahead of that full season corn. I think that's a little bit more common from a farmer perspective than double crop sorghum. And then you're, you're also doing, uh, in, in your current system, you also got full season beans, wheat double crop, and then full season beans again in 21 and 23. Mm -hmm. So maybe that's important for the research, you know, to kind of cut, get two full season beans in there instead of switching to a one full season grass. I don't know. That's just just an observation that we don't have a full season grass there. Mm -hmm. yeah. No, that's a good point. Uh, on the research side, we usually we try to have it at least two times repeated yeah. that cycle. I, yeah. Um, yeah, no, but that's a good comment that we didn't have. We can actually have any comment. No, no, that's a, that's a, a great point because now if you have a soybean wheat and then if you want following uh, wheat soy. So you finish the rotation of soybean, wheat, soybean, winter fallow, and then you do soybean, wheat, soybean for the rotation. So you don't have any, that's only one opportunity there for saying, okay, you can put a full season of corn. We'll have to figure that out. We, need to probably, uh, we can have another just objective <laughs> one meeting sometime. Another day. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, no, great discussion. So I guess um, we, we had uh, 20 minutes here, maybe 15 uh, before break. Um, so if we just kind of have a report out to the larger group. Uh, Ramu, you want to just keep the group going? <laughs> <laughs> report out of what? The what to summarize our objective, too. Oh. So, okay. Okay. Or maybe okay. Yeah. Uh, tell what we want to do it. <laughs> No, absolutely, we can do that. Yeah, so, same thing. That's the first from the objective. Okay. <laughs> so we've designated one from objective one. Go forward a bit. Um, yeah. So essentially, most of our discussion was trying to fine tune some of the things that we are noticing that maybe can be fine tuned in the that we noticed in the first year. Let me share this. The first couple of years of the of the study. So we spent quite a bit of time actually discussing the measurements, right? There's been a, a very intense measurements from the, from the crops side and we're discussing whether that's the best way to use our time. Uh, on more measurements from, from all those plots or, or whether to reduce the number of measurements, be more focused, but then expand to some satellite trials uh, with the idea of res responding specific questions, right? So uh, essentially you have 17 treatments. We're doing 
whole lot of measurements on these, and that was most of the discussion yesterday. Is that a good use of our time? Or should we tone down the measurements here and expand the satellite, satellite, satellite trials to, to, to answer specific questions? On that, we are discussing putting a, an additional SARE grant and try to bring money to do some of these additional satellite trials that would respond things like a best cover crop in front of wheat, best cover crop in front of summer crops as well, and even some interactions with phenology and, and, and things along in population. Then this morning, we spent more time discussing the, the, the treatments that we are actually doing. Uh, essentially, what we decided to do here, um, we're, we're not going to modify many of these. Actually, we're not going to mo modify anything huge on these treatments. But we decided to do a few things, the modifications, for example, uh, add a canola crop in our adaptive grain uh, over there. In our forage soybeans in the adaptive, we decided to add a millet crop together with the forage soybeans as well to go after more uh, biomass. Uh, and then uh, Huda is also going to look at the quality of that biomass. So, so that's going to be interesting data there. We're not going to change anything on treatments four through seven here. Treatments eight through 11, uh, you can see here that we have a winter fallow and we see this as an opportunity to put a, a, a grass cover crop in front of the soybeans. So we're actually adding a triticale cover crop there to be terminated before soybean planting. This is the intensive treatment anyway. So we, we, our idea there is to have no fallow, no, no, no bare ground any point in time. Uh, treatments 12 through 14, 15, we didn't change anything there. They, they semi-intensive uh, pur dual purpose here. And then on the green nitrogen treatments, we, from K-State, we modified, we didn't have moth and depre this year. We actually had alfalfa and forage soybeans. <clears throat> what we decided to do there is in the alfalfa, instead of terminating it now, we're actually gonna oversee triticale over it. And we're gonna have that mix of crops, alfalfa and triticale, which improve the amount of biomass that is, that is growing there. Uh, and then that's going to flip flop next year where uh, forage soybeans switch with that alfalfa and triticale. So again, major things that we have here. So yesterday, uh, well, this morning was mostly de de defining on these fine tuning treatments based on what we've seen so far. And yesterday was mostly discussing what measurements to focus on uh, and, and if that's the best, the better use of our time, spending as much time measuring very intensively these plots or adding additional satellite trials. Did I miss anything that uh, maybe you need to, to add as well? Decided to do some more detailed nitrogen management uh, or nitrogen measurements throughout the, the, this, uh, the experiment as well for nitrogen and all plots. Yes, Tyson. Just a question. So uh, you don't have the uh, data that you'll need to estimate the so on the water is efficiency we do Andres is, is measuring uh, detailed soil moisture in five treatments right so for those five treatments we will have uh, the, the soil water budget with uh, measurements in the profile for the others we're probably going to have to do this, some sort of precipitation use efficiency yes you're, you're not collecting biomass but we are, right? So, I mean, uh, so between those, so we, we will have the biomass data and then we will have the soil moisture data. Uh, for the other 12 treatments, we'll have to do some sort of precipitation use efficiency because we don't have the detailed soil moisture. On the nitrogen, that was a big discussion that we had as well. We have the baseline measurements for all the plots. Uh, and so far we have, we, we didn't collect soil nitrogen from those plots uh, up to now, at least in, in Kansas. I think in Oklahoma, Brian has that data, uh, but we will be starting uh, with this winter crop now be measuring it at every planting. We'll be taking a profile nitrate sample from here through the end of the experiment. So at least from here on, we're gonna have a detailed by crop budget. And before we, we need to see what we can do with the baseline that we have up to now. Thank you. That, that sounds great. And I just say what I said over there. To the extent that in our project we can link the water and the nitrogen together, I think that's where we really stand to gain the most money. That's great. <laughs> yeah. Excellent. Thank you.
next article. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's Jerry and Camacho. <laughs> Glad to see you there. I listen sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Any other comments, feedback? All right. Step two. Hey, Mondo, thank you. I'll go uh, after you. Okay, see, I don't know if that's considered objective two, part B, or objective three, but uh, we, we split in two, so. <clears throat> uh, no, we don't have any slides. We have uh, Tyson's notes. Oh, I'm sorry. Let's see. Tell me again. Okay. So we, uh, we split in two groups. Uh, the one part that uh, discuss uh, farmer to farmer network, Kronos. Uh, ET partitioning and regional soil moisture. So for a farmer to farmer network, the idea is to uh, gain a little more insight on how producers uh, make decisions. Uh, now that Justin is here, I'm gonna... <laughs> so I think the idea is that next year we try to bring the, the producers uh, to the meeting and trying to have, you know, not only them interacting with us, but also interacting among them. Uh, so we have three sites in Kansas potentially two sites in, uh, in Oklahoma, is that right? Uh, so, oh, yeah. and then uh, I think uh, Jason uh, will commit to do some interviews, but something that we want to do is to have uh, the producers with, uh, you know, on one-on-one -on -one meetings or even in smaller groups uh, where they can share how they make some decisions and that where we can show some of the tools and the, uh, you know, the decision trees that we, we are developing so that they can tell us whether that has any value or that you know fits within their system, whether they would be interested in adopting that, or it's just one more tool in the toolbox that may not you know have any any real value. So I think we want that that kind of interaction. Um, but I think we put a lot of emphasis on, on having smaller groups, you know, so that we can, you know, the producers can open and you know we can we can actually share a little more details. Uh, we discussed uh, with Carlos a little bit on the uh, Kansas uh, strip trials, and I think Oklahoma is still going to uh, try to implement similar uh, uh, experiments, and I think they are going to try to search for maybe a grad student to also take the lead in, in Oklahoma. Regarding uh, Kronos networks, uh, we discussed a little bit on the, uh, some of the technical problems that we are having, and that is preventing us from delivering uh, re near real-time uh, data to the producers. Uh, so that's also part of the reason why we don't have much feedback is because we are you know, failing to deliver the data. Um, and so the idea is to simplify the systems, maybe drop cameras and at least provide atmospheric uh, conditions and soil moisture conditions um, and try to simplify that and maybe start growing uh, again. Uh, but that was perhaps the, the main uh, takeaway there. Uh, I think we are going to be reaching six sites in, uh, in Kansas. We have two in Flickner Farm, two near Ashland, and the next two might be no farms, maybe. And, uh, you know, we need to find uh, uh, the, 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 the other two. And then I think, uh, Tyson, I'm not sure if you're going to have those uh, six by the end of uh, year three. But the idea is to have the 12 that we committed and typically side by side. Uh, regarding ET partitioning, uh, Eduardo is going to be deploying about three to four uh, uh, towers across the state. And the idea is to try to, uh, because the measurements are, are, you know, the measurements that we have now are indirect. And so we need to find a way to validate those measurements and then see if we can actually use the uh, crop models to take advantage of how to model the entire system. And I, we, we talked something about creating a map of ET partitioning to really quantify if this 50% evaporative losses are you know, real or they match previous uh, uh, studies across the two states. So that is to have a map of ET partitioning or evaporative losses for the two states. So like a regional mapping. Mm -hmm. uh, so that is, uh, is, a, is a project that will take a, quite a bit of time uh, and, and effort just because going from uh, the ET partitioning, you know, monitoring E and T can be quite challenging. So we will need to develop some, some work with the students. Um, and then the regional soil moisture mapping, I think, uh, so Oklahoma has something in place already. Uh, in Kansas, we are uh, trying to come up with a, with a similar approach, trying to leverage soil moisture from the Oklahoma Mesonet and the Kansas Mesonet. 
uh, and that is going fairly well. Uh, I think we just need to formalize that into a map. And again, when you saw the presentation by uh, Prasad the other day, he was already showing the nitrogen tool for Kansas and Oklahoma together. Uh, I guess the idea is to move in the same direction with the regional soil moisture mapping and with the uh, ET partition. I don't know if I miss anything. Okay, hopefully we can accomplish all of that. <laughs> Okay, so we're the other half of uh, Caesar, Curtis, Leisha, myself, and students, Leanne and Kelly and Glenn. So um, we talked about four, I guess, emphasis we're going to look at for this next year into 2022. And the first one is start compiling some of the environmental output from the uh, crop simulation modeling and uh, look at how these different practices contribute to ecosystem services and, and uh, specifically looking at soil moisture, carbon change, maybe some nitrogen phosphorus runoff and ET. The next thing that we're starting to work on, I've worked on a little bit is trying to value in-season information. And so I guess the example we're gonna try to shoot for is some of the work that Dr. Ron and Brian Arnell and others have worked on with enriched strips and build that particular system into APEX and EPIC simulation modeling um, to generate some probability distributions that we'd be working with to understand not only risk, but then also get at the value of this information. And piggybacking on that, um, generating, and Cesar's already started working on this, generating some total factor productivity indices using some of the simulation models that they've built already. Um, we need a closer link with those output to um, input use and output prices and costs. And also as field trial information comes in, link that into the crop simulation modeling. Um, and lastly, for the next year's winter crop school, 2022 in November, we'd like to get some feedback from the audience on what we've been doing over the years. So that basically that's what we talked about. Any questions? Cool. I will. Okay, thank you. Okay, so planning for the fourth objective with the REUs, um, my goal will be to put together a Qualtrics survey for the mentors um, rather than we didn't meet today. So I'd like to put a survey out so I can get some of that, your ideas documented and, and things that we might need to do um, as we plan for next year. Um, if you wanna put this down, my deadline to ask for research projects will be October 18th. Um, if, if you come up with them now and early or the same as what you've had before, go for it, but October 18th. And so that'll be sort of my deadline for um, feedback from the mentors and potentially having a Zoom discussion to, to follow up on that as well. So sort of over the next month. Um, my goal then will be to open up the application for the REUs November 1. So that's why I need it by the 18th. We can put that on our website and start putting our call out for REUs. And then um, ask them to be due by mid-February is what we had done in previous times and be able to turn that around so we can start reaching out in March um, to those um, REUs. So those are my key plans right now to, to keep that program rolling. Any thoughts, feedback at the moment? <laughs> 